Hello and welcome to Amigos IAS. I am Adnan. In today's segment, we'll be discussing the recent Supreme Court judgment recognizing the right against climate change as fundamental right when it comes to interpretation of Article 14 and Article 21. So let's jump into this issue and try to understand in what context this particular case has come. So first things first, this particular case is regarding the protection of the species, critically endangered species, the great Indian bustard as well as the lesser florican. These birds are grassland birds and they also inhabit the semi-arid and the arid areas. Now these birds are facing threat, they are almost about to be going to get extinct unfortunately and these birds are mostly concentrated in the Rajasthan and Gujarat areas. And in these areas where Indian government is implementing projects because of its renewable energy commitments and for that wind turbines, solar panels, all these are inevitable part of expanding India's renewable energy capacity. But the challenge is that the protection of critically endangered birds and then in meeting India's climate uh, commitments, okay, that is what India has promised in the Paris climate deal. How to balance between both of these? That is the crux of the issue. Let's go into that issue also and slowly we we'll try to understand what are the dimensions involved in this particular case. So let's say the first thing, right against climate change is a distinct fundamental human right. As we have seen UPSC asking questions regarding how Supreme Court has uh, constitutionalized the environmental problems in India. We are seeing several judgments of the Supreme Court uh, with respect to the healthy environment, clean air, okay, and not having any kind of uh, adverse impacts due to pollution. And now climate change dimension also has been addressed. So let's try to understand what this case is about. So as I told you uh, regarding Great Indian Buster and Lesser Florican and the title of the case is M.K. Ranjit Singh uh, and others versus Union of India that is the case title if anybody wants to refer you can just google at that case. Uh, he is a retired government official Ranjit Singh and he has filed this PIL regarding protection of Great Indian Bustard and Lesser Florican species. So this case is going on because I will just come back to this point see here. An order was pronounced in open court on March 21 this year where the court heard the arguments made by the petitioner and they told let us have an expert committee to examine the problem faced by these bird species. They are colliding with the power transmission lines in Gujarat and Rajasthan. Big birds, okay, especially Great Indian Bustard is a very heavy bird, one of the heaviest birds okay, and it's quite taller also. These birds lack frontal vision. As a result many times they collapse, they collapse because of their collision with these power lines and you may ask why these power lines as I told you India's commitments for solar and wind power fine. So the case has been posted for further hearing in August 2024 but suddenly last Saturday on April 6th the Supreme Court uploaded the judgment copy. Final decision we are expecting in August 2024 but Supreme Court already has you know uploaded judgment copy in that we understood that right against climate change is a fundamental right okay so we will see what this case is about. As you can see on your screens, this is the great Indian bustard with all credits to this beautiful photographs uh, displayed on the screen uh, to the photographers here and this is the lesser florican. Similar bird is also Bengal florican which is also endangered species. Very few numbers are left in the wild. Let's say great Indian bustard has less than 200 uh, you know species left in the wild and government of India is uh, conducting uh, like let's say Rajasthan government which is a state bird of this Rajasthan is great Indian bustard guys. Rajasthan government already is implementing certain programs for the conservation of the Great Indian Bustard. Recently one incubated chick was in news. Uh, breeding programs are being conducted by the government to restore the populations of these species but it is very difficult for these uh, birds to you know rear the chicks. Many of these particular uh, chicks will not hatch or you know they don't survive. So it's quite a challenge to do artificial you know programs. Uh, uh, to save this species. That is a big concern and also these species are critically endangered as per IUCN and as per CITES, okay, convention for the okay, uh, international trade in endangered species, as per this they are in appendix 1 which is the highest protection. That means no trade is permitted uh, with respect to the parts of these birds. Okay, appendix 1. Then we have convention on migration of species, CMS, there also they are in appendix 1. 
okay and then they are schedule one species where nobody can possess these particular species highest protection is granted to them and no hunting also is allowed if you see these cases you can understand that how it is important to conserve this species but the problem what is coming here is that when you save this species it is affecting the uh, india's commitments to the international community let's say the unfccc paris climate deal we have to increase our renewable energy capacity that is where the issues are coming so just remember the pictures of this particular birds and and their habitat is grasslands and uh, semi arid and arid areas now you see this pollution is a challenge here climate change predators invasive species poaching and hunting also are other concerns for this particular birds court told the decline of the species population is also because of the overhead transmission lines birds collide with them so gujarat rajasthan as i have told you they have enormous solar wind energy potential arid areas are there high voltage power lines criss crossing the flying path of these birds lead to high rates of mortality guys it is the great indian bustard which is having the high mort mortality because of collision with power transmission lines so what supreme court has told okay in april 2021 the court has told that 99000 square kilometers of the habitat of this great indian bustards in those two states we need to consider the saving of this habitat and there when we talk about the transmission lines the power lines court placed restrictions on setting up this overhead transmission lines and they told what let's have a committee that committee will examine the feasibility is it possible for us to have underground high voltage lines on a case to case basis so let's say low voltage power lines should be laid underground in the high priority and potential habitats of great indian bustard and also when it comes to the other okay high voltage lines case by case basis and low voltage lines if possible underground you have to construct okay that means i repeat the points again here guys what the committee has to examine here that means can we lay underground high voltage lines on case to case basis if it is possible what about low voltage power lines based on the habitat priority of this particular great indian bustards okay so there if possible also construct underground power lines but is it possible that's a big question as far as existing power lines are there should we remove them no the point is that you can install some bird diverters so that the birds will not come near those power lines okay pending the conversion of overhead power lines into underground power lines that means see here bird diverters should be installed unless you convert until you convert this overhead power lines to underground power lines so these restrictions have been put by the supreme court regarding the saving of these species but is it feasible to do this underground you know transmission of this power lines some challenges will come so what is the government's response here central government has told ministry of power ministry of you know environment forest and climate change ministry of renewable energy these three ministries have given an application and asked supreme court please modify your order because it is not possible for us see here it is going to affect india's power sector undergrounding of power lines is not possible because of severe challenges cost also is very high sand dunes are there in the sand shifting sands will be there if sands are shifted it becomes very difficult for us to do proper marking of this uh, underground okay transmission lines so these logistical challenges were told by the these ministries and then we also have this india's commitments to paris climate deal as we understand intended nationally determined contributions as per this what happens guys india already has given its commitments let's say in glasgow uh, cop 26 also india has uh, given some new commitments panch amrit what it is called 50% of india's installed capacity of this power has to come from renewable energy that is india's commitment and we recently cross 188 uh, gigawatts we want to go for 500 gigawatts of renewable energy production by 2030 we want to go for net zero okay by 2070 these are our climate commitments international commitments we have given to unfccc the framework convention on climate change now india has to meet these goals that means india has to construct wind turbines india also has to have to increase the solar capacity solar panels are important in this area so again see the clash saving critically endangered species meeting your climate goals that is the point here so there 
we need to see what court has decided okay what court has told they modified this order in the past where they restricted the laying of this uh, transmission lines okay overhead they asked for underground but now court has modified this because of the government's response what the court has told here it plays reliance on several reports by wildlife institute of india which is an autonomous body in the ministry of environment and forest and climate change they identified 13000 okay out of 99000 kilometer square kilometers 13000 square kilometers as priority areas 80680 kilometers as uh, potential areas 6654 square kilometers as additional important areas again this is not very important for the exam perspective let's see the next point here Supreme Court modified earlier order and said there is no basis to place a blanket direction for undergrounding high voltage and low voltage transmission lines. No blanket order, that means there is no order like you have to compulsorily lay those cables underground. And what they have told here, they recalled the earlier order guys, 121 order. And they told, besides not being possible to implement, if you do this also, it is not going to serve the purpose of the conservation of the Great Indian Bustard. And government of India already gave the affidavit saying that we are going to save this species, we are going to monitor their presence, we are going to uh, involve all the stakeholders, we are going to take some measures to stop the poaching of this species, conservation programs we are doing, that assurance the government has given that we are going to save this species. Okay, So that is what the court also has accepted. And now what is this last aspect of the climate change guys, so let's try to uh, you know sum it up here. In this backdrop, Supreme Court has given some points like climate change India does not have a single law as of now at least some other countries have made some blanket legislations regarding climate change Indian India does not have any single law on climate change you may say then we have commitments no of course in our constitution let's say we have this uh, commitment by the state in DPSP article 48 capital A which was added by 42nd amendment uh, 1976 it has given a commitment or it has placed some kind of uh, you know, obligation on the state that it has to take steps to protect the natural environment, safeguard the forest and the wildlife. It is also a fundamental duty for all of us, okay, to save the natural environment, have compassion for living creatures. Then there are so many case laws regarding the environment, uh, okay, uh, of course, but this particular class is not related to that. I mean, I can have a separate discussion on all the Supreme Court case laws with respect to saving of environment. So mostly the cases will come in the nature of M.C. Mehta, who was a very famous, okay, he's a uh, environmentalist and he filed many PALs regarding the environment. So M.C. Mehta cases, you can understand where Supreme Court has held that right to healthy environment is a part of Article 21, right to life. So you can see the expansion of scope of Article 21 by Supreme Court guys. MC Mehta cases are many cases are there, okay. In one of the cases there is one more absolute liability principle as well. Absolute liability principle means like even if you don't intend to do harm but you are creating harm. Like you are diverting your factories, uh, you know, this particular affluence into the river, rivers or the water bodies. But you are liable for that because you cannot destroy the water bodies because of your factories. So that means absolute liability principle was also invoked by Supreme Court in MC Mehta versus Union of India case. And right to clean air and environment has already been held as a part of Article 21, which is a fundamental right. So all these point out how court has Supreme Court has uh, really taken up the cause of uh, uh, environmental uh, issues in India. And uh, in that now this segment also got added. What is that? right against climate change because climate change impacts are very high it is affecting our livelihood our energy security our food security it, the pollution is impacting our health okay and we are see, we are facing extreme weather events so poor are more disproportionately you know impacted because of climate change so we need to take some measures in order to save the poor population that means we need to ensure that they have clean air clean environment uh, okay and uh, and uh, not polluted water all these are important components with respect to Article 21, guys. So, right to life and right to equality cannot be fully realized without a clean and stable environment. And right to health, which is a part of, again, right to life, okay, is impacted because of our health, because of air pollution, wet or bond diseases, which are increasing a lot because of the warming of the, of the earth, more and more easy conditions for the wet tors to breed, like mosquitoes, okay and uh, rising temperatures, droughts, shortage in food supplies because of crop failure, because of productivity of the agriculture is declining because of climate change. So all these are impacting our health. 
that is what is the point storms and flooding okay and the underserved communities the marginalized communities the poor will face disproportionate impact that is going to impact the right to life and right to equality also so environmental degradation climate change are some serious issues for that the court has taken okay the cudgels on behalf of the people okay so water shortages food shortages all this will impact the poor communities the court has held that governments now you may ask like what is the use of this let's come back to that point there is an interconnection between climate change and various human rights we use today the word called climate justice because climate change is not just an environmental issue climate change is moral ethical issue also because it impacts people's lives fine so right to health indigenous populations have rights over their resources gender equality right to development they are all a part of this human rights and climate change right to healthy environment and right to be safe from the harmful impacts of climate change these are all fundamental human right the court has held very important decision guys so despite governmental policy and rules and regulations india does not have a single law which is concerned with the climate change guys so that means does it mean that indians do not have right against the harmful effects of climate change now this particular case guys okay so this particular case in this case now supreme court has opened up the ambit of article 21 further that means if our lives are going to be impacted because of climate change like the harmful effects are there clean air environment okay non polluted water bodies are there food security is there and also right to health is there if all these things okay are impacted we can file cases against the state that is the importance of recognizing any aspect any particular aspect as fundamental right i hope you understand this point that means if right against climate change against climate change means against the adverse impacts of climate change is a fundamental right under article 21 and 14 it means now the parliament has to enact certain measures in order to save us from the harmful impacts of climate change and mostly it is the poor who face the disproportionate impact of this climate change that is why the concept of climate justice also is becoming important one in the context of the developed north and the underdeveloped south there also climate justice is important the developed countries have to do more to help these developing countries and underdeveloped countries or ldcs to uh, transition towards a towards a kind of technology where less emissions happen they also have to support with finances because the poor countries will not have enough money to transition towards a clean energy so that is i think understand all these aspects are included in this particular issue so mostly i concentrated in the environmental perspective in policy perspective if any question comes regarding uh, what are the supreme court legislations or the judgments or case laws with respect to uh, saving of the environment then i will uh, discuss that in a separate video guys so i hope you understood what this issue is about if you still have any questions then do post in the comments i will come back with another video some other day keep watching amigos is thank you